So before we start, just so you all know, I texted Stephen Darlene all yesterday morning and then later in the afternoon found out that I wasn't texting Darlene, but somebody in my phone bank that I don't have the name of and I have no idea who it was. So when I told her that she was nothing but a drunk because she grew up by the, the Stevens Point Brewery, somebody else got that information. <laughs> These things happen. All right, let's begin. It is time for worship. Welcome to worship here at Lakeview Lutheran Church um, via Zoom, a couple people in the sanctuary, and for those of you who will view this on video throughout the week, we're glad that you're worshiping with us today. Uh, I remind folks that you're always welcome to um, make a financial contribution to the mission and ministry of Lakeview Lutheran Church. We appreciate that as well. This week is the, for those who have uh, made a reservation, is the scalloped potato and ham meal. It will be picked up in the parking lot between 4.30 and 6 p.m. on Tuesday evening. So remember, if you've uh, made that reservation, to get in line with your car and to make that happen. The food pantry would like some hot chocolate. So if you haven't had an opportunity to donate some hot chocolate and you can do that, you're invited to um, drop off some hot chocolate for the food pantry during these cold months and during the holiday season, they would like to be sure that all the households get some of that, so that's great. They can also use brown paper bags, so um, that's good too. On uh, Thursday of this week, that's Christmas Eve, and our Christmas worship service, Terry will be putting together. Um, he started that, and we'll, yeah, Terry's wondering if he's going to do that. If we ever get the flutes correct, um, will be fine. Uh, but that service will be put together and available on Christmas Eve morning on YouTube and the uh, uh, church Facebook page. And you can actually go to the church website, go to, scroll down to the bottom right corner and click on Vimeo and you will you can access it there as well. So it's really quite easy to get to. Um, so that's this weekend, or that's Christmas. And then next weekend, remember, is a pre-recorded service that Terry will put up sometime over the weekend. I'm actually recording that on Wednesdays, so you'll be able to access that over the weekend. And then on January 3rd, my final service, uh, we will have a live stream that I will make sure that we get sent out to uh, all of our mailing list via email um, before that happens. I won't do it too soon because then you'll forget where it is and you'll have to call me and ask where the link is and could I send it one more time. So that'll be, that will be coming. Um, I don't think I have any other things to announce. I, I'm looking at Lynn because she's older than I am. And then I feel good if I forget something because I look at her and she's... <laughs> She's forgotten as well. So with that, I will, um, uh, some of you will see the, or the video, on the video right now, you're going to see the ornaments on the tree. We have a, a, a whole bunch more we're put on this week, and that's exciting. And um, we will prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prelude. <laughs>
living God, sovereign love, giving to Mary anxious perplexity, faith to believe, and the space to say yes. Keep us alert for visiting angels, that we may hear your call, be honest yet faithful, and know that you, for you, nothing is impossible in Jesus Christ. If you are lighting Advent candles with me, I invite you to light all four of them on this fourth weekend of Advent. We light the fourth candle as a sign of God's love. God's love shines in the world through people past, present, and future. Let us pray. Living God, thank you for coming to our world. Thank you for meeting us in the real people who are part of our lives and whose stories we can tell. And above all, thank you for coming to our world in Jesus. Amen. The Bible reading for this final weekend of Advent comes from the 16th chapter of the letter to the Romans. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. So that reading on this last weekend of Advent includes the final verses of the letter to the Romans. Remember that throughout Advent we've been looking at the second reading that's assigned in the Revised Common Lectionary. The letter to the Romans, of course, I'm just telling you in case you forgot, is part of the New Testament. It's sometimes called an epistle. That's what letter means in Greek, epistle. Um, there's a Greek word for it, but Laura can tell you that sometimes. Martin Luther really enjoyed the letter to the Romans because it had a lot to say about faith. The, the few verses, those three verses that I just read from chapter 16, are sometimes called a doxology. You've heard that word before. We use doxologies in Christian worship quite frequently. A doxology is simply a short hymn of praise to God that's been added to a psalm or some readings or um, to a hymn. So maybe the most familiar doxology to most of you, especially if you're Dana Dalton and a former Presbyterian, is praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Besides being a hymn of praise to God, those short verses from Romans are also a benediction, a beautiful benediction, or sometimes what we call a blessing. You know that a benediction is a blessing. And you also know that it's our Lutheran tradition to end our worship services with a benediction or a blessing. We'll do that again this morning. So maybe the most familiar benediction to you goes like this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. So in this short little reading at the end of Romans, we find some of our most basic and most cherished elements of Christian worship, which include that final hymn of praise to God and then that wonderful blessing to those who receive those words. <clears throat> so just before we come to celebrate our Savior's birth in Bethlehem, which we'll do on Thursday and Friday of this week, regardless of what's happening in the world, Christmas still comes. Just before we get there, we are presented with today's reading, which ultimately celebrates God's plan of salvation in the world. And isn't that what Christmas is all about anyway? Christmas isn't about the presents. It's not about the tree, even though it's pretty cool. It's not about the music, even though Lynn plays wonderfully, or, and a bunch of folks have worked hard to bring Christmas music to you. Um, Christmas isn't even about gatherings with family and friends, things you can't even do this year. 
Christmas isn't even about coming to church and singing songs and hearing a sermon, as wonderful as those sermons are here at Lakeview. Christmas is simply about salvation. And this year, as we are being asked to keep other people safe, ourselves and other people safe, by avoid gathering, we may actually, it could be a blessing actually, we may actually be able to focus a bit more on what Christmas really is. Because this year, the fluff of the season has been removed. We can't do, or we're not supposed to be doing, it would be healthy for, to not do those things, all the kinds of things that we've always done during the month of December and throughout the Christmas week. But despite all of that, Christmas still happens. Christmas is about salvation. Your salvation. My salvation. The salvation of the world. Christmas and salvation come to us even in a pandemic, even when traditional activities and events cannot happen, even when you wear a mask and stay in your house. Today's reading from Romans reminds us that God's plan of salvation was announced by those prophets of old. It was then fulfilled with the coming of Christ in Bethlehem. It is available to all the nations. And it will find its final fulfillment when Jesus returns. And during Advent, it's that return of Christ that we have always focused on. As we talked about last week, we live in the in-between time, Christmas 1 and Christmas 2. We live there and we wait, as we've talked about, and we wait with patience, as we've also talked about. And it is in this in-between time when we are called to imitate Jesus with our acts of compassion and our works seeking justice and equality for everyone. So if you read the prophetical books in the Hebrew scriptures, sometimes we refer to that as the Old Testament, books like Amos and Hosea and Micah and Malachi and Habakkuk and Isaiah and all the rest, if you read them, you would hear those prophets repeatedly tell us that, that God's plan for salvation will be to exercise liberating lordship over the rebellious creation. And then, once God does that, God will reconcile or reunite that creation with God's self. The prophets predicted that it would happen. And God followed through on that, prophet, prof, on that promise and reconciled the world by giving us Jesus Christ. That night in that manger in Bethlehem, God offered a new relationship to all of the rebellious creation. Mary's baby boy, born in a barn, wrapped in strips of cloth, laid on a bed of straw, proclaimed by the angels, and visited them by dirty, filthy field shepherds, was the fulfilling act of God's plan. Jesus is salvation for the people. Jesus is God with us, Emmanuel. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. Jesus is the Savior of the nations. Come to all of us. The reading from Romans today, with its doxology and then its blessing, is an assurance to us that God brings to completion the things that God has promised. Because we trust God, we can recall with joy that first advent of Jesus Christ in Bethlehem. And we will even do that this year in 2020, as difficult as the year has been. And because we trust God, we can also await with quiet confidence and patience for Jesus to come to earth again. We don't have to be concerned that it's taken over 2,000 years for Christ's second advent. With confidence and faith, 
we await that final time when God's plan for the creation will be visible to all of us. So may God, who is able to strengthen you through the gospel and through the mystery of Jesus Christ, give you the desire to be obedient in your faith, trusting in all that God has promised, because only God is wise. And to this God be glory forever and ever. Amen. We thank for Ellen Klein for singing the hymn today. It is Savior of the Nations Come from our ELW, page 263. and come quickly to this weary world. Thank you for your gift of the Savior of the nations. May this church proclaim with clarity and honesty his saving grace. We lift to you all leaders of the church, particularly during this time of COVID. Be with our bishops, Eaton and Morton Sunweebe. Thank you for the gift of creation and for the changing of the seasons. Help us to remember that the beauty of snow and ice may be devastating and life-threatening to those who are homeless and hungry and living in poverty. Continue to open our hearts to respond with justice toward people who are oppressed. Move each one of us to advocate for equality between the genders. As we approach the birth of Jesus, may we remember that even in a pandemic, Christmas comes. Help us to separate the truth of the event from the fluff and the hoopla that we've ascribed to Christmas. Make our hearts satisfied to know that Christmas is about salvation. We give thanks for the vaccine and the possible light at the end of the tunnel. But despite that good news, do not let us drop our guard. May all people take precautions for the good of the community. Come to anyone who grieves today and during this blue season of the year. Bring healing to those who are ill, including Georgia, Pam, Mary, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Amen. 
Together we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final music meditation today, I've got a description for you like I always do, and I apologize, it's rather long. In fact, it's almost as long as the sermon. Lynn's nodding off. I'll wake you up when it's time to play, because you're an important part of this. So today, we're going to hear Lynn play one of the most popular Christmas carols of the English-speaking world. In 18, I bet you can't wait to find out what it is now. In 1887, American hymn writer James R. Murray entitled the tune to this song, Away in a Manger, that's how you know it today, he called it Luther's Cradle Hymn. Murray suggested that Martin Luther had not only written the words to Away in a Manger, but that he had sung it to his children before bed. Well, as the song spread across America and people began to sing it, they often envisioned German mothers rocking their babies to sleep each night with the strains of Away in the Manger. However, German mothers of this time did not sing Away in a Manger. They had never heard of the song until it arrived in Europe from its country of origin, the United States. No one knows where Murray got his misinformation on Luther, but because of Murray's outstanding reputation as a writer and a publisher, the story about Luther stuck. And some people even still think that Luther was the writer. In 1945, some of you might be able to remember that. Oh, I got a couple of people here. Lynn and Verlon both can. Um, American writer Richard S. Hill sorted through the 70-year-old mystery about this carol. He determined that James Murray probably wrote the music himself, long coupled with Away in a Manger. It's more likely that Murray was given the song and simply adopted the existing German-influenced melody into four-part harmony for his own book. It also seems likely that Murray received the story of Martin Luther writing the piece from the person who originally gave him the song. And no one knows who that was. So we will likely never know who wrote the words of this most fam favorite hymn. We can be very sure that it was not Martin Luther. We do know that these words that you're so very familiar with have been set to nine different melodies. We have two of those melodies in our Evangelical Lutheran Worship hymnal. I don't know which one of them Lynn is playing today. That's my surprise. When we hear the words of this carol, they remind us of that humble birth of our Savior, born in a manger, surrounded by cattle, with no crib for a bed.
Thank you, Lynn. You may have realized that that arrangement worked in both melodies that we find in our hymn. Now receive the blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And one final announcement that I did forget earlier. This week on Monday, between the hours of 9 and noon, the glass door to the sanctuary will be unlocked, and you'll be able to come in and take a look at the ornaments on the tree. We'll turn the lights on. Please exercise um, distancing and wear your masks if there are other people in the room. Um, and then exit again that door without coming down to the office area or making contact with other people in the building. We'd appreciate that. So Monday between 9 and noon and Tuesday between 9 and 4. Um, I invite you to stop by and I really do encourage you to do that because some of the ornaments are very, very funny and certainly very representative of the people who made them, Darlene Wood and others. So go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.